All right, so we have this wonderful image from Penny Black. It's a little bicycle on some brick, and I'm going to be focusing in on the brick today so we can really look at no line coloring. That's going to be the goal. I've tested some colors out and found a combination that I really love, so I tested those out on just a piece of scratch paper. I've got E13, E04, and E09. The E13 is what I'm going to base my image, or the brick in, not the whole image, just the brick, sorry. And I'm going to do some coloring and fill that area in to start. Now I could use either my brush nib or the um, chisel nib on this portion because I'm really just filling it in. And I'm going to take one section at a time. It doesn't make sense to try to do all of the brick just because I can't keep up with um, the blending and keeping the ink a little damp. You'll see even when I do this today, um, I really could go even a little bit um, smaller sections because this first big section, it actually is a little more than I can tackle at once. So I could have stopped at the brick lines. This base color though, notice, is just getting a nice even coat, kind of filling that whole bottom area in. And I did speed up a little bit because some of this I'm going to go back and forth just so we can keep this at a reasonable amount of time. E04 is next. Now I can barely see those lines and this is where I'm going to go ahead and reinforce those edges of the brick. So that sepia ink that I used to stamp with is almost disappeared. So I'm using the E04 and I'm going right literally, I'm going right on the line and then flicking in just a little bit around the, from the outs, that line inward on each brick. Now I can't see the bricks real clearly, so I'm some of it I'm guessing I could go back to my stamp or back to the image like from the packaging and look for those specifically. But I do remember that it's not a regular pattern. Like it's not, you can see on the other side above the bike or to the left of the bike that I've got small squares, I've got rectangles. Um, there's no distinct pattern. It's kind of a cobblestone effect. So again, I'm just working my way kind of through one section with this E04 going right over the line so I make sure not to lose the line, but I'm recreating it with the shading of this E04. Now I'm going to do that for this bottom section and get those kind of filled in. I'm not going to try to do all the way up to the bike. I'm going to keep right in this bottom area so we can keep moving and then I'll do a little speed up work to kind of get us through the next section. All right, so now I am going to add one more color, and I'm going to add an E09, which actually is a, a marker color that has a lot of pop to it, a lot of power. I love this color um, for red brick. It's also one I use a lot on redheads, like for hair. It's one of my favorite colors to end with on a redhead because I feel like it gives that earthy tone that, so it's not a carrot top, like a orange color hair. It just adds this beautiful, deep, rich tone, but still keeps it as a redhead. Anyway, for the brick, I am going right over the line where those bricks are. And see, now I can see where those are a little more clearly because of the E04 that I added. And then this is going right over those lines and maybe right at the corners, just a touch, right at the corners of the ends of the brick to really define that. So I wanted to look like a cobblestone that has space in between those bricks. Go ahead and finish this section up with the E09, sped up just a little bit. But hopefully you're getting a real good sense of kind of the time consuming nature of kind of a no line colored image. So now I have to blend those back together. So I'm going to switch back down to my E04. So I'm backtracking. Remember, we kind of use the term of going in reverse or backtracking. but Or I do, at least. I don't know if anybody else does. I shouldn't say that. But I back down to my E04, which was my mid-tone color. And I'm blending that E09 with E04. Now, because this is right out at the edges of the brick, I'm not doing a bunch of circling. I'm not doing a bunch of flicking. I'm really just kind of 
actually coloring right over that E09 area, right up to that line, just to soften the edge between the two. I could do some flicks, I could do some little circles if that helps kind of soften those colors. I knew from practice on my test that this was gonna be a good combination that they would blend pretty easily, pretty happily together. So I knew it wasn't gonna to be too much of an issue. Speeding up just a little bit again so we kind of get this section done. And then here comes our E13. And this one, I'm really going right back into the center of each brick and circling. Now you might have noticed at the start of the video when I was talking that my E13, this color, didn't go on super smoothly. I had to work at it and give it several layers. This marker is drying up and that's why it looked like that. It took a little more effort to get it to like, actually color and give that nice base. I need to refill it, and so that's something I need to take some time to do. But you can tell I'm starting right in the center of each brick. I'm adding that ink down, and it's kind of pressing out into the E04, and it softens those edges and blends those together really nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up a little bit, get these all softened up but you can see this beautiful brick pattern and there's really no stamp lines there so now all the rest of the brick is going to get done and i'm going to leave this in fast forward or we're never going to get through all the brick but i do the exact same process on the all of those areas so i've got the base of e13 i've come in with e04 and now i'm going over the lines with e09 and then I will go back and blend. So the process gets repeated over and over and with a section like this, then it's really easy to do small sections at a time. I know exactly which markers I'm going for. And once I've done that first section, I know exactly the process I wanna go through each time. I slow down as I get up to the bike because even though I want those lines to disappear, I don't want to get into the bike itself because I want to have those colors that I add later on the bike still read really clearly. So now I'm jumping all the way over to the other side. Here's my other big section of brick. I've got my E13 and now I'm laying down my E04. E09 is next. and then E04 to blend. See how I've stayed out of the center of each brick? Each brick still has that light area in the center. I'm really aiming for that so I can keep the brightness of that color. And then E13 to come back right into the center of each brick and soften that last little bit up. Again, I love this group of colors for that cobblestone effect. I've got some areas in between, kind of behind that bike, and so I go in and just add small amounts Still the same process. I'm trying to do a little bit of that E04. It gets a little tighter in there and the E09. But the more I can work in those back areas, the more realistic the entire image is gonna work. And so I'm still doing this whole process of the three layers and blending. And then I've got the wheels. So I'm gonna slow down for a second and show you what I'm gonna do. I don't wanna lose the spokes and I will if I don't give them some extra oomph. So I come in with a um, Copic Multiliner, and this one is very fine. It's a 0 .03, and I'm gonna go over all the spokes before I've done any coloring. That's gonna give me those nice, thin black lines right where the spokes are. I don't want black lines anywhere else, but I do want them on the spokes because that is a part of the bike that would have that true black line because that's what it is. Anyway, so I'm gonna get that down first and I have to take my time on it. These little spokes on this image are so confusing. I actually lost a couple and I know I drew a couple the wrong direction. But e, that one is a .03 was the size I was using. So then I have this brick that I can see through the wheels. But now because I've got the spokes drawn in and the multiliner sits tight, even when I color over the top of them with um, the Copic, and so now I can come back in and color 
my bricks. And you can see them through the bike wheels, which again, one more step to give us that realistic feel into that image. Sorry, my head is in the way. Apologize for that. E04 coming in to frame those bricks out a little bit. Finding all those little holes in the image and tucking color into them. A little bit of E09, pretty limited behind those bike wheels, just so I don't lose that. And then I'm doing some blending with my E04. And coming in again with my E13, even seeing the petal there behind. So next week, I'm going to finish out this image. And I won't do it all in real time, but I'll try to hit a couple little areas in real time as well. Thank you so much for joining me this week at Copic in the Craft Room on YouTube. I hope you subscribe to our channel. And if you haven't seen it yet, check us out on Facebook as well. We have loads of Copic inspiration happening on a daily basis. Thank you and have a happy, colorful week.